Chapter 18, Four Queen's Journey Four Queen and Pebblepaw drowsed outside the den until the sky began to grow pale with dawn, and Echo Song pushed her way into the open. We ought to look for the others, she meowed. Four Queen nodded, anxiety for Cherry Tail and his sisters prickling at his pads. And first we have to look for Snip Kip. Rousing the kids, Four Queen led the way along the riverbank, heading further downstream. As the dawn light strengthened, it dazzled off puddles and water droplets hanging from every branch. The river had gone quieter, winding among the rocks like a glittering snake. The dawn air was fresh and clear. Once or twice, Hawkwing's heart beat faster with hope as he thought that he had picked up a trace of the missing kit's scent. But each time, the trail petered out and he realized that he had been wrong. The brilliant morning didn't reveal any sign of Snip Kit. Curly Kit and Fidget Kit grew more and more frantic with every poor step they took. We have to find her, Curly Kit meowed. What are we going to tell our mother and father? Hawkwing couldn't escape a heavy feeling of despair. He was certain in his own mind that they weren't going to find the little black she-cat. Even if she didn't drown, she'd be a defenseless kit all on her own. She could have been snatched up by a hawk or killed by a fox. Firmly, he shook off these dark thoughts to focus on the remaining kit. Where did you last see your parents? He asked them. We were with Birdwing when Leafstar called the retreat, Fidget Kit explained. But we lost her in the crowd. We don't know where she went, or where Sage Nose is. We don't know where any cat is, Curly Kit wailed. Well, we're here, Pebble Paw mewed comfortably. We'll look after you, and I guess we'll find your family soon. I hope she's right, Paul Queen thought. He led the cats further along the bank, his hope dwindling with every heartbeat. As he was wondering whether to give up and turn back, he heard rustling of some creature pushing its way toward them through the undergrowth. Snipkit? Fidgetkit mewed eagerly, beginning to hurry towards the sound. Wait, Hawkwing warned him. The sound suggested a much bigger animal than Snipkit, and a low growl coming from the bushes convinced Hawkwing that whatever was in there, it wasn't the missing kit. Opening his jaws, he picked up a musky, unpleasant scent. Hawkwing and Echo Song sprang forward, pushing Fidgetkit behind them as the branches parted and a strange black and white animal burst into the open, glaring at them from malignant eyes. A raccoon! Pebblepaw exclaimed. Hawkwing froze, amazed at his first sight of one of the vicious creatures that had attacked his claymates while he was away. It was black, white, and grey, with white around its short, pointed muzzle and black rings around its eyes. Its claws were long and flexible, reminding Hawkwing of a two legs forepaws. He had no doubt about how dangerous it was. As he and Echozong gazed at it, for a moment too startled to move, the raccoon darted forward toward Echozong. The medicine cat started back, but she didn't move fast enough. She let out a screech of shock and pain as the raccoon sank its teeth into her shoulder. At first, Hawking wasn't sure what to do. He had never seen a raccoon before. What can these creatures do? How do I fight it? In his moment's hesitation, Pebblepaw leaped at the raccoon, slashing her claws through its thick fur. With a hideous tearing sound, the raccoon let Echo Song go, and the medicine cat slumped to the ground with a dull thud. Then the creature turned on Pebble Paw, hissing ferociously. Terrified for her, Hawkwing barreled into its side, thrusting it away, and lashed at its muzzle with one forepaw. With a grunt of pain, the raccoon spun around, scattering drops of blood from its injured muzzle, and vanished once more into the undergrowth. Thanks, Star Clan, Pebble Paw exclaimed. They were much fiercer than that when they attacked us in the gorge. Maybe they're not so brave when they're alone, Hawkwing responded, grateful the encounter had been no worse. It seemed just as surprised as we were when we came across each other. I don't think it was looking for a fight. Though he and Pebblepool were both bruised and exhausted, the raccoon hadn't injured them. The kids were fine too, crouching under a bush with bristling fur and eyes stretched wide with a mixture of fear and excitement. So all we need to worry about is the bite on Echo Song's shoulder, Paul Queen thought, relieved. Echo Song, are you badly hurt? Pebblepool asked. The medicine cat shook her head. It's not too bad, she replied. It just needs cleaning out and cobweb to stop the bleeding. I'll clean it up, Pebblepaw offered at once. Echoson, come and lie down here in the shelter of this bush. Echoson padded over into the shade of a hazel bush and sank down with a sigh of relief. Pebblepaw crouched beside her and began to clean the wound with strong, rapid rasps of her tongue. Come on, Kits, Hawkwing directed. We'll go and look for cobwebs. The kit sprang up instantly, obviously pleased to be able to help. We'll find lots, Curly Kit boasted. 
Brooklyn kept an eye on the kids as they all headed into the bushes and tried to imagine how they felt. They've lost their home and a litter mate all at once. I'm scared, so they must be terrified. You're doing really well, he told them as they peered under branches to find the cobwebs Echo Song needed. By the time Hawkwing and the kids returned with pawfuls of cobweb, Helpful had finished cleaning Echo Song's wounds. Already the bleeding had almost stopped, but she still showed Hawkwing how to plaster the cobweb over the bite. Fidgetkit patted it carefully all around to seal the edges. You should rest now, Hawkwing told Echo Song when the cobweb was in place. Keep the kits with you, and Pebblepaw and I will hunt. But we shouldn't we go on looking for Snipkit? Curlicut objected. No, Echo Song replied, curling her tail around to draw the little grey she cat closer to her. We need to eat to keep up our strength. We can't help Snipkit by making ourselves ill. Fidgetkit nodded seriously. We'll look after you, Echo Song, he mewed. Are you comfortable there? If you stretch out more, it should be better. And can we find you any herbs to help with the pain? Not right now, Echo Song replied, blinking affectionately at the little Tom. It's more important for us to stay together. When Hawkwing was satisfied that Echo Song and the two kids would be safe for a while, he headed further downstream with Pebblepaw at his side. Though they still kept a lookout for Snipkit, their main purpose was to find some prey. Hawkwing hadn't realised until then how hungry he was. We'd better watch out for raccoons too, Pebblepaw murmured, tasting the air. It's weird that they started coming onto our territory so often, when we'd never seen them before. Hawkwing nodded agreement, then halted as a sudden realisation struck him. You know, he began slowly, thinking aloud. I saw Darktail scattering two-legged food scraps near the camp. Suppose he was trying to lure other animals, foxes maybe, and these raccoons, onto our territory to cause trouble for us and put us in danger. How long have Darktail and Rain been working against us? From the very beginning? Pebblepaw listened in silence, her eyes widening as Hawkwing explained his suspicions. I saw Darktail leaving half-eaten pieces of prey outside camp once, she meowed when he had finished. But that was a long time ago. I didn't know what to think about it, and I didn't want to confront Darktail. Her head drooped in regret. I should have shared my suspicions with some cat. Hawkwing shook his head. It's not your fault. I could have spoken up too, but I thought of Darktail as a friend. I still can't really believe what he did. I felt so close to him. The cat I thought he was just wasn't the same as the cat who did those dreadful things and spent so much time planning how to destroy us. The quests, too, he added. I don't think he ever knew where we could find Firestar's kin. He just wanted to distract us and weaken us. Then he succeeded, Pebblepaw mewed solemnly. We followed his directions, and we lost Billy Storm. It's my fault, Hawkwing continued, fighting with a renewed onset of guilt. I saw him leave the food scraps, and I should have reported it. If I told Lee Storm Sharp Court, the attack last night might never have happened. Pebblepaw huffed out of breath. Don't deceive yourself. Darktail is clever and sneaky. He would have thought up some excuse. And you couldn't possibly have known just how evil he is. Maybe you're right, Hawkwing sighed. Pebblepaw's words comforted him, even though he couldn't entirely get rid of his guilty feelings. At any rate, once we find our clanmates, I'll protect them from now on, even with my last breath. Pebblepaw pressed her muzzle against his shoulder. We'll make things better, she purred. We'll work together and save Sky Clan any way we can. Now let's hunt, she added. My belly thinks my throat's been clawed out. Sunhai was approaching by the time Hawkwing and Pebblepaw returned with a mouse and a couple of voles. Echo Song was asleep with the two kits nestling against her flank, but all three of them roused as Hawkwing and Pebblepaw padded up and dropped their prey beside them. Curlicut and Fidgetkit blinked sleepily, then sprang to their paws and looked around hopefully, only for a heartbeat. And their tails drooped in disappointment. You didn't find Snipkit, Curlicut mewed. No, but we found fresh kill, Pebblepaw told her, pushing the plumpest vole toward her. Come and eat. So can we go and look for Snipkit now? Fidgetkit asked when every cat had dolped down the last mouthfuls of prey. Hawkwing glanced at Echo Song. We know that Snipkit is dead, he thought. Maybe this is the time to tell the kids. Echo Song shook her head sadly. Shook her head sadly. No, she responded to Fidgetkit's question. If Snipkit had made it to shore, we would have found her by now. Curlicut and Fidgetkit gazed at each other in dismay, and Curlicut let out a miserable wail. It doesn't mean she's dead, Fidgetkit meowed. She could be on the opposite bank. Bullwing exchanged a doubtful look with Echo Song, while Pepperpaw studied her paws and wouldn't meet the kit's gaze. You could be right, Echo Song agreed at last. I think if Snipkit did swim to shore, she would try to find the rest of the clan. And so should we. Hawkwing, where do you think the others would have gone? Hawkwing wasn't sure. 
Maybe near the gorge, he suggested, watching the rogues and getting ready to attack. I doubt it. Pear will pull me out. They'll be injured and exhausted, in no fit state to fight. Not yet, at least. I think they try to find a place where they're sure to find other clanmates. And there's only one place like that, Echo Song stated, in the Two Lake Place with the Daylight Warriors. Wolfgang's pelt began to bristle with nervousness as he and his clanmates approached the Two Lake Place. This was only the fourth time he'd been there, once with Ebony Claw, who was a Daylight Warrior and thoroughly familiar with the hard thunder paths separating the huge stone dens, once with Billy Storm and the rest of the patrol in the first quest, and once when he followed Darktail. He'd hoped he would never have to go there again, and when the first of the dens loomed over them, he felt lost and uncertain. The two kits had never been there before, and were staring around, around in wonder. It's so big, Curly Kit exclaimed. Will we see two legs? Fidget Kit asked. What will they do to us? Probably nothing bad, Echo Song mewed briskly. Follow me. Hawkwing stared at the medicine cat as she took the lead so confidently. Have you been here before? he asked. Echo Song glanced at him over her shoulder. Of course, she replied. Didn't you know that I was once a kitty pet? Hawkwing exchanged a surprised glance with Pebblepaw. No, he meowed, shocked that a kitty pet could become a medicine cat with such a strong connection to Stark Clan. You really lived with two legs in one of these dens? I really did, Echo Song told him. Firestar found me and explained why I was dreaming of cats with stars in their fur. But that was a long time ago, she said dismissively. I hardly think about it anymore. Echo Song led her clanmates along the edge of thunder paths, down alleyways, and past so many two legged dens that Hawkwing became bewildered. If I was on my own, I'd never find my way out of here, he murmured to Pebblepaw. At last, Echo Song squeezed under a two legged fence and beckoned with her tail for the others to follow. Hawkwing brought up the rear and heard the two kids squeaking with excitement as he pressed his belly to the ground and crawled through the gap with the bottom of the fence scraping his spine. Buzzing to his paws on the other side, Hawkwing found himself in a two-legged garden. The powerful scent of cats caught him in the throat. Looking around eagerly, he saw that a long stretch of grass led up to a two-legged den at the far side. Close by, crouching in the shelter of some bushes with glossy dark leaves, was Leafstar, surrounded by several of their clanmates. Relief filled Hawkwing like rain, filling an upturned leaf. Some of us have survived. There's hope after all. Within a couple of heartbeats, Hawkwing's feelings of relief began to give way to dismay, as he realized how many of his clanmates were missing. Something cold gathered heavily inside him as he looked in vain for his mother, Cherry Tail, and his sisters, Cloud Mist and Blossom Palm. Have I lost all my kin? Emily Claw was with the others. When she spotted the newcomers, she bounded over to them and dipped her head. You're alive, she exclaimed. Oh, it's so good to see you. Welcome to my nest. In spite of his anxiety about his family, Hawkwing couldn't wait to rejoin his clanmates. They looked exhausted, and their pelts were ragged, but their eyes were bright as they clustered around, eagerly welcoming. There's parsley, Paul, Pebblepaw exclaimed, running to touch noses with her brother. Oh, I'm so glad you're safe. Sparrowpout and Tiny Cloud were there too, hurrying up to greet their daughter and brushing their pelts against hers. Birdwing sprang up and bounded up to Curly Kit and Fidget Kit, closely followed by their father, Sage Nose. Think Starkland, you're safe, she mewed, relief shining in her eyes. Then she paused, her gaze travelling over the newcomers. But where's Snip Kit? She's not with you, Fidget Kit asked anxiously. Shay's Nose... Sage Nose shook his head. We haven't seen her since last night. The two kids launched into their story of how Snipkit had fallen into the river. Hawkwing could see growing dismay in Birdwing's and Sage Nose's eyes. A Birdwing let out a wail of pain when Curly Kit told her how their search had failed. She drew her two remaining kits close to her, and Sage Nose buried his muzzle into her shoulder fur. Giving them space to grieve, Hawkwing looked around to see who else was there. He spotted Minfer with all four of her kits, as well as her mate Nettle Splash. Tom Willow and Wasp Whisker had made it too, but his relief at seeing they had survived couldn't wipe out the desolation that his mother and sisters were missing. And after a moment, Pebblepaw left her family and came to sit beside him, offering silent support with understanding in her eyes. Hawkwing leaned toward her, grateful for her warmth. It's been a while since any kitty pets were attacked by raccoons, Emily Claw was explaining to Leafstar. So my two legs have started letting me out again. They're only in the daytime. What about the others? Leafstar asked. I haven't seen them, the black she-cat replied. But I reckon they'll be free again soon. Two legs like to do things at the same time as each other. If only Darktail hadn't made his move while all of us daylight warriors were shut up. Maybe we would have been able to turn the tide in the battle. I'll never forgive myself for not being there. Don't blame yourself. I'm sure Darktail took all that into an account when he was making his plans. Leafstar meowed grimly. 
No Cat looked angrily at Hawkwing when the evil rogue was mentioned, but he felt another painful pang of guilt, and never want to hear Darktail's name again. Well, Ferropout began, sounding determinedly cheerful. Now that we have the Daylight Warriors again, we can gather up the rest of the clan, attack their rogues, and take back our territory. An enthusiastic murmur rose from the group of cats. We'll teach those rogues, Tiny Cloud called out. Yes, rip their pelts off, Nettle Splash growled. Hawkwing flexed his claws eagerly, relieved he could put the past behind him and prove himself anew. Reliefsto raised her tail for silence. You're right that we need to find our missing clanmates, she meowed. But simply attacking the rogues might not be the smartest course of action right now. Hawkwing's jaws gaped in shock. How could we not fight back? How could we not avenge my father's death and so many others? Several of his clanmates leaped to their paws, his, their fur bristling in outrage. You can't mean that, Lost Whisker protested. They're in our home. But we're not the clan we used to be, Sparrowpout pointed out. We've suffered so much. It might be moons before we can take on those rogues. Good. Pebble's voice was a soft mew, but somehow it called the attention of every cat. Hawkwing could tell from the way she looked at the ground she was uncomfortable asking her question. Could this be Sarkland's plan? Would they be punishing us for something? The gathered warriors passed uneasy glances back and forth. No cat sure how to respond. Some of them looked worried. I don't know. Leafstar's sigh was weary. The important thing now is to follow the prophecy. Our clan is on the verge of being destroyed. If we want to save Sky Clan, we must find the spark that remains. Then we will see what the future holds for us. Hawkwing's belly lurched, and he felt as if he would vomit. We've already tried twice to find Thunder Clan, and both times it ended in disaster. He reflected that it was Darktail who had led them into trouble on the previous quests. But even so, SkyClan knew no more now than they had then. How can we possibly succeed? It's clear that Starklan is testing us in many ways, Lifter continued. We lost our deputy, Sharpclaw. As he heard some cats gasp, others sigh, Hawking felt as though clouds had gathered to cover the sun. He knew that SkyClan now needed a new deputy, but everything in him refused to accept it. Sharpclaw is our deputy. Replacing him made it clear that Sharpclaw was truly dead. In his mind's eye, Hawking could see rain creeping up on his father, and Darktail's murderous blow that had ended Sharpclaw's life. Repressing a shudder, he met Pepperpaw's steady gaze and immediately felt a little stronger. He stretched her tail across his shoulders, wordlessly comforting him. Cats of Sky Clan, Leafstar began, her gaze travelling over the remnants of her clan. Yesterday, Sharpclaw died honourably in battle, killed by the most treacherous cat I have ever known. We will never forget him, but the clan must go on, and I must appoint a new deputy. Hawkwing's grief eased just a little as Leafstar praised his father. She's right. We'll never forget you, he thought. I'm proud to be your son. I say these words before Starclan, Leafstar continued, that the spirits of our ancestors may hear and approve my choice. Boss Whisker will be the new deputy of Skyclan. A murmur of appreciation rose from the cats clustered around their leader. But Wasp Whisker's eyes widened in surprise, and a pleased expression spread over his face. Leafstar, I never expected this honour, he meowed. I can never be as noble a cat as Sharpclaw was. But I swear by Starkland I will be loyal and a faithful deputy. Wasp Whisker, Wasp Whisker, the Skyclan cats chanted. Hawkwing joined in. A mixture of pride, happiness, and grief warmed his pelt at the words Wasp Whisker had spoken about his father. Though he was still troubled that Sharpclaw would no longer be deputy, he knew what a good choice Leafstar had made. Wasp Whisker was a strong, brave warrior, but he was wise as well, and he would support his leader and his clan through the dark days that were to come. Every cat respects him, Hawkwing thought. If any cat can help lead us out of these dark times, it's Wasp Whisker. <laughs>